Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now, and I'm here today with Christy Zarlengo, owner and director of Children's Music Center of Jamaica Plain in Boston. Christy's here today to help me celebrate the wonders of arts education. Hey, Christy. Hey, Cindy. How you doing? I'm doing great. We've known each other forever. I'm so glad you could be with me on my show today. Thanks so much. I'm happy to be here. You've been a musician your entire life, singing, playing piano and keyboards. You even attended the prestigious Berklee School of Music in Boston. Tell the audience about your journey from professional musician to music school founder. Oh, gosh. Well, let's see. I finished up at Berkeley. I was uh, writing songs, singing, playing piano. I uh, was playing piano on a local cruise ship in the Boston Harbor. I was writing songs. I was going to be the next Sean Colvin. I was convinced. Um, and meanwhile, I was living in Boston, which is a really expensive city, and I had to make a living. Uh, and so I went into piano teaching originally and um, it just didn't, it felt like a job. It didn't feel like the, the right match for me. Um, uh, but I did it for a couple years and I was working at a certain school in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and they needed somebody else in their early childhood program and they asked if I wanted to give it a try. And so I learned how to teach early childhood music groups with parents and kids. And I remember the first thought I had was, wow, this just, it doesn't feel like work to me. And I, this would just never feel like work. I absolutely loved it. I discovered that I love young kids, which actually I discovered as a piano teacher as well. But this was just such a wonderful way to spend time with kids and with their parents and to show them the joys of music, and I knew that I loved it. So long story short, I started doing it um, in addition to my performing life, and slowly but surely, it, you know, the, the teaching of early childhood music grew bigger and bigger, and I loved it more and more, and you know how they say that life is what happens when you're busy making other plans? That's kind of what happens. So life happened, and this turned out to really be my calling, and I, I've done it ever since. That's awesome. So do you still play professionally at all? I do not. I have not been playing professionally or writing, really, for about six years. Um, the school keeps me really busy and uh, satisfies my creative outlet. You know, it's always good to know I could go back to music as a performer and writer, if I wanted to and when I wanted to. So that's always nice to know that it's there. But I'm just really busy right now running the Music Center. You offer classes from birth to young adult. So tell us about the influences of music education on young children between birth and five years. That's a pretty interesting concept. It is an interesting concept. Well, we know that Music education, and, and in, uh, specifically in early childhood, really covers all the bases of child development. It helps with social development, cognitive development, which everyone knows about, motor development, speech development. So it really encompasses the developing child like nothing else, in my opinion. Um, and everyone sort of tends to focus on the cognitive benefits. And we all know that music makes kids smarter, makes them better at math. But I think that the most overlooked reason to do music, and I find that in my center, I think that a lot of the parents are there because music makes us more human. And that's really the biggest gift we get from it. It makes us more human. Um, having a life where you love music, whether you become a music performer or writer or anything like that or not, just makes life so much richer. And I think that I sense that most of my parents who come to the center with their young kids really want that for them more than anything. And, and the cognitive stuff is just an added benefit that we get on the side that's, you know, a bonus. Um, and the other thing that I think is really wonderful about music is it creates community with people. We see that in worship settings. 
um, music brings people together in a beautiful way, which I think is just um, powerful and a wonderful thing in the world and a wonderful thing that changes the world and makes it a better place. Interesting. Speaking of bringing people together, I see that you offer group lessons for varied instruments as well as musical theater in addition to individual study. So do younger children learn better in groups, do you think? I do think so. I mean, I think a lot of age groups learn better um, in groups. I think the fact that kids go to school in a group, regular school, you know, virtually almost everything we teach, we do in a group setting. Now, it is important when you study an instrument and when you get more into to that, at, you know, as kids age, then it is important to have individual study. And one of the main reasons for that is that kids really vary in their um, the speed of their progress and so it becomes really important to have a one-on-one -on -one relationship for that kind of instruction but the reason I think kids learn better in a group and especially kids you know six and under is that kids at that age are really in the process of developing socially and they're really they're developing their personalities and, and their sense of self in the context of a group. So the wonderful thing that happens in a group setting with young kids is that they want to assert their personalities in the class. You know, I'll be in a class with a group of kids and they'll all chime in and, you know, think of different ways we can move to the beat of a song, maybe a different animal we can act out uh, to a song. You know, they all want to chime in with these ideas and what that does is it makes them want to be creative, makes them want to engage. So you've just got them right there. And then I think in a way we kind of sneak the music into that. <laughs> and, or whatever you're teaching them, you know. I, I sneak the music in and maybe I'll say let's create a jungle and let's all be different animals and we'll move in musical ways. Let's make a rainstorm on a drum. Uh, so the fact that they're learning in that social context is what engages them and what makes them want to be creative. So it all sort of works together. Interesting. Mm -hmm. So is there a specific age when it's better to start private lessons or is it more a skill level? There is an average age and I, I would say we, we teach mostly piano at our center. So for piano, it, I would say most girls are ready to start around six years, most boys around seven. And it's not that girls are smarter, even though I think we are in a way, but it's not that <laughs> girls are smarter. It's just that I think girls and boys learn in a different way. They just learn in a different way. So boys, I think need a group setting for a little bit longer just in the way that they learn. Um, guitar is different. Guitar is later for all kids because guitar takes a certain finger dexterity that young kids don't develop for a while. So I think guitar, I've heard a lot of teachers say like 10 or 11 is a great age for guitar for both boys and girls. Um, violin, funny enough, they start as young as three with the Suzuki method. They came up with this way to teach kids violin and they can literally, boys and girls can start at three. So that's probably the youngest. That's amazing. That's yeah, amazing. It is, yeah, it is amazing. So and it varies. You know, we have some kids that start piano at four. Not, not often, but it, it can happen. And the important thing is that they're engaged and interested and having fun and, you know, that the process is fun and makes them want to continue to learn. That's the most important piece of it for me. So tell us... You've told us general benefits, but do you have any real life examples of how coming to your school and learning more about music has actually changed some children's lives right, right before your eyes? You know, I do have examples. I'm going to call upon a place that I used to work, um, which is called Zoomix. And Zoomix is in East Boston. I was a volunteer there for years and I started teaching piano there. Uh, years ago, Zoomix, and it's spelled Z as in zebra, U M I X. And Zoomix's mission is here it is empowered youth who use music to make strong, positive change in their lives, their communities, and the world. So, again, Zoomix is located in a part of Boston that's traditionally been low income, and they offer low cost lessons. 
um, songwriting programs, music production. They work with more older kids, it seems, you know, kids in their teens and high school. And what I've seen in working there years ago, and I'm still, you know, connected with them, is that a lot of those kids end up going to college. And not that that's even the most important thing. They also just become wonderful, well-rounded members of their community. And so it's just a phenomenal organization. So tell us, how do you market your school? Do you advertise, use social media, rely on word of mouth? You know, almost completely word of mouth. I mean, I started uh, about 12, 13 years ago with the Music Together classes. And back then I was renting a space in a church. Um, it was really small. It grew, you know, just over the course of about four or five years, it grew from two classes a week to over 10. And, you know, I'm someone who never set out with a business plan. I didn't form the business that way. I just sort of loved it and I started doing it and people in the neighborhood started coming. And then soon I had this dream to continue to serve those kids as they got older and aged out of, of our early childhood program and to sort of shepherd them basically from their very first musical discoveries through studying an instrument through high school, even into adulthood. So um, that's how it formed. And over the course of 12 or 13 years, um, we've just established a foothold in the community. And it's just been word of mouth. And, uh, you know, I am on Facebook. I do social media. Um, but by and large, it's just been word of mouth and very, very slow and organic way of growing. It's, a, it's really a neighborhood school then. Yeah. It, it is, it is, it is, for the most part, yeah. Well, since Amuse Now is about artists helping artists, um, tell us a little bit for other musicians who might think about transitioning into teaching. Can you give us any advice? Sure. You know, I think that there's a great need for music teachers. And, you know, in every city, there are lots of centers like mine. There are, you know, music schools, some large, some smaller um, there's certainly a need to do it privately. You know, you don't, you don't even have to work through a school. You could work for yourself. You could be a, an instrument teacher. There just always seems to be a need. And I think if you really love it, there's no limit to how far you could take it. You know, you could work for yourself, open a center. Um, you know, it also very legitimately, and there are some great teachers who don't do it full time. It's not their full time thing. Maybe they're performers and they, need extra money to survive. You know, these big cities are expensive to live in. And, you you know, a lot of us as musicians, I think, piecemeal are living together. You know, you might perform some, you might teach some, you might, so, you know, but I think if you love it, there's no limit to how far you can take it. And there's certainly a need out there for teachers who love what they do. There's a need for everybody in every profession to love what they love do. what they do because sure. it makes a major difference yeah exactly yeah well Christy thank you so much for meeting with me today I really enjoyed getting to know more about the music school that you have and your life in Boston I'm going to continue to spread the word about arts education and the benefits of education, and I hope you'll start spreading the word about Amuse Now and how we're enabling artists to make a living doing what they love. I certainly will, Cindy. Thanks so much for having me. This was fun. You're very welcome, and I wish you all the best. Thanks so much. You too. Take care. Hi, I'm Cynthia Kahn, founder of Amuse Now. This featured artist presentation has been brought to you by Amuse Now Entertainment, a website that enables artists to profit from their creativity. To learn more about Amuse Now, visit us at www.amusednow.com or email me at ccon at amusenow.com.